Hey guys, let's start setting up Solaris. So instead of changing that here now, I'm just going to dive into stage. Uh, we don't need that. We're going to build our own thing. So don't worry with that. And let's do, if you ever uh, worked with Solaris, if you never worked with Solaris before, um, that's, we work in the stage context. And the stage context brings geometry from from your object or directly from a file, a USD file, or whatever you have, uh, even an FBX. But it, what it does, it's it's it works with USD. Is the universal universal scene description, and that's becoming more and more the standard for the industry. And and what it, what that offer is a description of the scene that work seamlessly between different um, softwares that uses uh, USD, and what that does is allow artists to just pick up the parts of the file that they want and and just disable parts that are just heavy. They are nothing to do with them. So from animation come like a a USD file and maybe they want the environment but they don't want the background they don't want the trees they just want a part for the simulation we just need the colliders and so on so that's a really good way of of having a, a universal uh, description of our scene so that's really powerful and i'm going and uh, you can do a lot of things it's m even more useful when you're in a big studio in a pipeline because you can extract more from that and you can use that in different ways and, and getting more complex setups. For us, it's going to be pretty simple and Hojini does the trick for us. It converts internally the geometry to USD in the background uh, when you import the data. So let's start doing a SOP import. All right, let me dive into here. And this one, let's call this the FG water geo in okay so that's the foreground water geo and we're going to load as a reference and let's bring it so it's coming from the flip scene i'm going to dive inside and what i want is this geo so let's import this guy here great we have it imported and now let me just do um let's let's just copy that and this one is going to be the vol so let me call it vol and in and i'm going to show you another way of rendering that without the volume uh in karma and i explain you uh, afterwards this is uh, just a variation of how you can do it it's going to be faster for that matter and this is just the path of the primitive just to organize the hierarchy we're going to see that later but what i want to do i want to add in both of these i should add that before copying so we saved some time but i want to say like this it's going to be um the flip we can call whatever makes sense so but i'm going to call flip and then another bar so it's going to be under flip and I'm going to just copy this guy, come to the other one and do the same thing. So both of them are under flip and then they are um, below that it picking up these names that we have. That's the dollar OS. The reference is um, basically is just looking to the file and, 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 and interpreting interpreting it inside this context so it's just like a referencing it and yep so this is our flat geo and this is the volume but we need to do a trick for the volume right like um, we can add like a geometry um, render settings I guess yeah render settings and we plug this in here for this guy what we want to do we want to come to the un uniform volume and set this what that does is 
this is a geometry, right? It's just going to interpret it as volume just for the render to have like something in the interior of the water. So we want to set that. This one we're going to link with the, the definition of the, the cloud density of the shader. We're going to do that later. And the render visibility, we want to also enable it. When you, when you click and you set or create, like you just enable it. And then now it's visible for everything, but we want this to be invisible to primary rays. What it does mean is that we only going to see the volume through reflection or refraction not directly. If I don't have anything here, if I render, nothing is going to show because it's just a volume. But because this fin layer is going to be transparent, like it's a water layer, we're going to be able to get this volume through this because we set this as a phantom, as minus, not in the primary, okay? Primary is the first rays that come from the camera and the lights, and the, the other layers are, are the reflection when they bounces it and go back or when it pass through through refraction okay i'm going to do another of these geometry render settings for this one but in this case we're going to enable a different thing i want to enable the motion blur and i want to enable the velocity blur in here everything we can say the same and then also the dicing quality this is how much we're going to lose with time when it's getting far from the camera. The little details are going to be like kind of lost if we don't increase that. So I want to keep that uh, initially at one. So it's good. We can set this to one. And now we can do like a merge. We can merge these guys. And yeah, in the next lesson, we're going to build the shaders for these guys. Um, and then we can just uh, do a quick render just for that. We're going to bring the lights. But before that, let's keep uh, bringing the camera so we can do like a SOP import. Uh, I think it's camera, if you write camera, scene import cameras. So I want to. Press C to color this as the regular. So cam shot one. All right. So this one, we want to bring the object. What we want to bring is just this camera. Accept. So this is what we bring. And also I want to add like a, a dome light. Okay, dome light. So it's the chain that we used to, but here is a little bit different. You can set up in different ways. Um, the idea is that some some of the order uh, matters. For example, if we're going to add like a material in here, the material to be able to work, it it should has like the geometry before it, so it can assign the material to that. Or you can set the material, and then you can have like an assigned material, but then matters the order. Otherwise, for these ones, like uh, we could just like do that and it would render the same way. Like if I have like this and this and this, you know, like it's also the same thing. It's going to render the same way. So it's more about organization. And for that, I'm going to keep as like this and this one as is. And I'm going to go here. Uh, the dome light. I'm going to provide you this uh, dome light, but this is the one that I'm using. I created that myself. So, and just a little bit of more light in here. I want to increase the exposure just a tiny bit, like 0.5. Yeah, that's it. All the same. We're not going to play anything. Yeah. For now, that's it. So in the next lesson, we're going to build the shaders for this guy. And we also going to get like a, a mask because uh, what I want to do, I want to add like a very tiny high frequency spectrum 
in these flatter areas just to break up the 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 ref the reflection the speckler of the ocean and give a little bit more interesting to to the whole thing so we're going to create that next thing welcome back i would i like to before we start uh, i want to create the the, the high frequency spectra for that so let's create it to evaluate that let's do something different i want to create like a grid and this grid like we can just make it like 10 by 10 but i want to do like a, a lot of 2048 2048 just to get like a lot of subdivision on this guy and then i want to just visualize it okay yeah it's very high res so let's create another uh, ocean spectrum ocean spectrum and the ocean evaluate and we plug this and this all right let's visualize <laughs> yeah very chunky and then let's start place uh, playing with the values uh, remember that i said the resolution here in this case we want a very little like uh, detailed uh, spectrum it's just a really high frequency one so I'm going to 12 if it's too much for you if you think that it's taking too too long you can decrease to 11 it's still very good uh, the grid size can be 20 by 20 so it's going to repeat every 20 meters so it's good and then i want to yeah we can keep like that yeah we can maybe just change the seed and then we need to play with the wind section here i want it to be the same direction that we have the previous one but the speed just one you see we're going to lose the big waves and also the fetch i want to be very small just a little tiny detailed uh, spectrum all right so this is good i think this well we can get like a little bit more directionality to it and the amplitude i want to make it like i think this is good enough nah maybe one two yeah i think it's a storm I, I want to have like a lot of details so i think this is good we can uh, also play with the mask in here if you want to just add some variations to it you can get like a add a noise this noise we can make it like 15 by 15 and i want the input to be 0.6 and 1 so we have like some errors they're going to be a little bit less and some are going to be like that okay that's good we can now save the spectrum let's save this as high frequency high freak spectrum okay and just one frame and just save that i already have mine but it's the same settings as this one so great now we can start building our shader if you come to the material tab once you created the ocean it already created like a few nodes for you like these guys we can start from one of those and also one of those and we can delete this guy so okay now what i want to do it's it's important to to understand like uh, that the shader inside this level it looks very complex but we can simplify it a lot and there's a lot of things that we don't care for example this whole chunk here is related to the form so this is the form uh, to render to give like a, a few uh, details to it so we don't actually care about it so 
yeah, you can delete, but you can also just ignore it. Uh, the thing that matters for us is this ocean sample layer. This thing is bringing the spectrum, but we don't have only one. We have a few of those. So in our case, we need to add this, um, add uh, the, the, the spectrum to it and the mask for it. The ocean itself is already displaced, like for this flip. Uh, we're going to have like more layers of the spectrum for the background ocean because it's a flat grid and we need to bring all the way to the same level as this. But this one is already displaced and distorted. We only want to add the high frequency detail to this. Okay, but we need a mask. Let's see if we created this mask. I'm not sure um, if we did. Yeah, we did. So that is the displacement mask. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to load this one. And I just want to visualize the displacement mask. Let me do, let me do a color node. You can uh, use the color node to visualize some of the attributes. So if I change this to ramp from attribute and I call the disk mask, remember that we have like this guy. So let me just do the flat shaded. All right, so we have this. Everything that is black, we won't have the displacement mask. So the name of this attribute is we need to bring inside that, inside our shader. So let's dive inside. And the shader is coming from, from this ocean layer. Before we add, we can multiply this by our attribute. So let's bind. It's a float. And the name is this mask. So now we can multiply. What's going to happen is that the spectrum is going to multiply by the black and white mask. It means it's going to multiply by zero in this area. That's going to give zero displacement and full displacement in this. And we are talking about the high frequency displacement. Okay. So with that and this. So the other thing that we need to bring is the color you we, we already have like this nice color that we we tinted it based on the vertices and the velocities i want to very little give this color to the to the ocean so some areas that has low velocity they're going to have this dark blue and once they get like more velocity and vertices they're going to they go towards the white that helps to blend with the white water so um in usd in the Solaris context, the way that USD reads color is not CG anymore. It converts internally to display color. So we need to do like a bind. Bind. And this bind is not a float anymore. It's a color. So let's set this to color. Where is color? Color here. Yeah, so it's a color and the name is like that. It's not that I'm coming up with this name. This is the default name, color. Display color instead of CG. It converts internally, so you don't need to do anything. And this part of the shader is the related with the color. So what we're going to do, we're going to come to here and, and place that, the display color. So we're bringing the color that we have in the ocean. In this case, is not this black and white color. Let me just go back in here and enable this guy instead. So this is the color that we are outputting because this is the one that we're importing in. If you add this color here and leave it on, it would bring this black and white mask color, whatever. So let's go back to here. Let's dive inside again. So the display color is set here. And then the amount we can define outside this. So if you look to this, we don't care about the, the form tab. That always related to that section that we're not going to use. But with the waves, yes. So let me um, increase a little bit this. So I want to do like 2.5 and 2.5. And the diffuse intensity, we can bring it a little bit more to, to really tint a little bit more. And the color is not this anymore. 
The color that we're going to use is the display color, so don't worry with that. And inside the displacement, I think we can just set like this to 2.5. Uh, it's enough. Uh, we don't care much because in this case, the displacement is just for the tiny little ripple. So it's even less like two is actually it's completely fine to have like minus two and two. You can have like even less. It's, it will be okay. Uh, let me see if, okay. Now we need to bring our, uh, we don't need that. And here we don't need that. Like we need to read. It's the high frequency is this one for me that I saved and down sample. Don't do any down sample. You can keep like as is and all good. So this one you can copy and in the volume, you want to have the exact same one. So paste relative reference. So if you middle click, you're going to see that it's pointed to the same one. And we also need to have like the same mask inside here. So you can just dive inside and let's come to this section that we have. So we copy this and the multiply, go back, dive inside. And here you see before we, we do it, oh, we do it like that. So now we have the same displacement mask and also the same multiplication, but the color of the, the ocean volume, we can set as a, as a simple color. We don't need to, to get fancy. We can start with the default just to see this value. I want to copy this parameter and yeah, we can keep like that. And remember that I, I wanted to link this. So we go to Solaris, just the stage. And in the volume part, we come here and we connect these guys. So paste relative reference that should match this. And with that settings, we are good. We just need like a material library. We can call this material library. Let's call this main flip mat. And you don't need, you can dive inside and have the shaders here, but if you have like in the material context, it also works. So we have two materials for two different geometries. And now if you change that to the Solaris context, so I'm going to just bring it here, let it think a bit and here we go. And now if we select like assign to the material, we have the flip and then we have like the geo and the volume, the geo goes in here. So the geometry path, the volume going to the geometry path. And then in the material, I'm going to bring from the material context, the ocean surface and the ocean volume. Okay. Ocean volume. Yeah. This one. Why is not okay here? This is the issue. I just, okay. So this needs to be connected with that. So let me just go and see what we have. So this down sample zero time should be time. So it should be dollar T. And displacement bound, we can copy from the displacement here. We have like the time. I think it's dollar T. Yeah, doesn't matter. We don't need to link because dollar T. But um, placement bound, copy parameter, paste relative reference. These weren't properly linked together, these guys. So that was giving there. I think it's gone there. Yes. And then you can make like a, a karma. The karma comes uh, with the first one. You have like all the settings and this is to save the render. So the settings, we need to bring the camera. Uh, so it's pointing default to the camera one that doesn't exist. So you just select the camera that you have. I want to do manual and my camera is like a 920 to 818. 
yeah a little bit more cinematic i want to increase this to 32 and for the time we leave uh, maybe this one to four just to get like a quick render yeah enable motion blur everything is good now if you select this you can select also the camera and we can give a little render for that and i come back once it's finished just to evaluate what how we are so here it is let me just give us a little bit more room now for the render you see that we have a lot of uh, elements that are interesting we have the color you see this area that is lighter it's coming from the the color of the ocean that we have set for the it's going to help planning with the white water here uh, we don't have the other yet the other layers of the the flip and you can see like these little details here and there like this is the one that's coming from the high frequency spectrum otherwise this is going to would be completely flat i think this helped to give a very interesting shape um, next uh, we can start bringing our uh, other elements i think i rather instead of bringing the white water i rather bring the the other uh, section of the flip the left and then the back to see how they merge together if we can see any seam or if merge seamless it's great and but the idea is going to be very simple because just bringing the same thing merge and then check it out thank you and see you there so now we have our main sim sim I just created a box just to organize everything and let's duplicate this guy and let's call this one side L flip okay I want to color this a little bit lighter just for organization and that you can copy this and you can use that to uh, to change this and this if you come here you can just also change this because this is just taking the name so we can just do like that and do like that so we have set but we need to point to the correct place so let me this is not the is the fluid water tank fluid side left yeah we have like the render geo right and also we have like the render vault the settings here are the same and we also have like a, let me just rename this side l and we also have this correctly pointed to the material because the material is the same and should be the same and we can just render this one instead of the other one without merging i just want to see because just because it's faster so let's visualize this guy you see this one you won't see this because we set this to only visible through reflection and refraction so there is nothing here that's the primary rays hitting that so let me uh restart render and let's see that yeah very fast indeed it's very fast ocean surface i wonder it does not quite look correct to me yeah i think we probably wrote something wrong so let me stop pause render and let's bring this guy up to see where you in one ah oh, there is one there i think we forgot to just do that and now if i do this i think 
restart render. Now it should work. It's going to take a little bit longer because now it will to, need to load into the system. Yep, it's working. It's working. This one, it won't be exactly like that because this, um, the other seam is going to be here, projecting some sort of shadow here. So it's not going to work like that. Let's render both together and I come back. I will just merge them. You can just do a regular merge and I pause this, combine these guys and render. See you guys in a bit. And that's it. So it's merging properly. You can't even tell where one simulation start and the other one ends it's very seamless and that's what it's our goal now we can bring the the background one the one the top center one and after that we can start bringing the other elements let me copy this guy this is top Enter. I'm going to copy this. Really nice. Pause. Going to combine all of them. And then with all combined, I'm going to just render one more time. And we're going to bring the other elements like the boat, the white water, and so forth. Here it is. I think this part there is from the back. This part is from the side, maybe this is from the back, but it's seamless and it's it's the proof of work. It's uh, We know that our system is working, so it's um, let's keep adding details. Uh, the next uh, part, I, I want to bring the white water and see you there. Hey guys, before we dive into the, the white water, section of the rendering i'd like to show you a cheap way to render this so let's do it what i want to do i want to render because sometimes like for example if your camera is shooting from the top and you can see through the mesh the transmission the the, the translucency of your water matter but sometimes it's in this case for example it's really dark and the camera is pretty low, so there is a lot of reflection. And I'm with all the white water on top, I don't even think we're going to see through the water to see anything underneath. So what we can do instead, just to show you, you can dive here. We for for this cheap version, we will miss the the spectrum, the high frequency, but worth showing. Like if you wanna go in a easier way to render. You can come in here and do the Karma Material X subnet. It took a while, I just put place in the manual. So let's say like simple ocean. Okay, we're going to dive inside. We can disable the displacement. You can bring the displacement in some other forms. Like if you bake into textures, you can bring the displacement here. But for now, I just want to show you like this should be really easy. And I'm also going to delete that and I'm going to place a standard material. So it's, if you write standard surface, yeah. This one, I want to plug this in here. 
And I also want to do like a primvar. Inside the Karma subnetwork or a USD network uh, for material, instead of using the, like the bind, you bring the attribute as the USD primvar. Okay, so I'm going to place this in color because then we need to set like as a vector and display color, remember? And there's a caps here, like in the C, right? Like, so that's the, the correct name. So we're bringing the color in here and I want to do like the same thing. Like, I want to just bring a little bit of the color. I got like this speckler, but I want to have like this as three, three. You can have a little bit of roughness and the transmission we can have a very tiny just to see something okay that's a very simple shader but now if we disable the volume because we don't need this anymore i'm going to plug this straight in here so we are bypassing this part and in the material instead of bringing from the material you need to come to the stage and then in the is this one right like so I'm just bringing the material that we just created inside this. And I'm going to just render this one instead, not the whole sequence there. And we can even like use the Karma XP if you feel like. So I'm going to just restart render. Oh, sorry. I need to make this and then I can restart the render. Now we are using Karma XPU. We are not having any displacement and you see how fast it renders. It's really fast. We still have the color passing through and the difference is not very large in the sense of the, 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 the details that we have. Of course, the other one, we have like more breakups, for example, in these areas, but it's 20 seconds, you know, like it, it much, much faster. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just render that as CPU just to see the difference. Because even if we decide to render, you see it, it come through very fast um, as well. But what I want to do, I want to have like this setup just to have like the white water on top so we can iterate faster in this way. And then later you can decide if you're going to render like that very fast or if you're actually going to have like some volume and some translucency into it. If you have like the keel of the boat underneath, you won't be able to see this way. So, and you see, you can see that it's more opaque and, and all that. So the other way is, is better, but this way also works. Okay, so that, that, that's how I would put that. You can refine this even more. For example, if I'm going to pause the render, if you want to come in here and you come to the subsurface and you can enable the subsurface, like for example, I'm going to do like 0.5 and the color, I'm going to use the same color. So subsurface color and even maybe for the radius. And yeah, maybe I make like this five and let's restart render i could just you see there is more now into it like it's a little bit passing more the subsurface scattering but the color is maybe too much is not regarding to the scale but regarding to the amount here so the scale can be like big because it's a deep ocean but if we just make like this maybe we can just make like this point two going to bring less color into it yeah uh, but what we can do we can do the base as like 0 5 less from that but in the subsurface we can bring back like 0.45 something like that and then we have like this that has some color that is a little bit more translucent and now um, we can do the same thing for the others so I will copy this material And we can place that, this one goes in here, paste this one, we disable this. And now we have 
everything and I'm going to restart the render and it should render <laughs> yeah <laughs> super fast it's really good to iterate you might even choose this option for your final render it might work uh, just keep in mind that you won't have a lot of like refraction inside but yeah tweaking this shader it's really good but for now the reason why I wanted I want to have like some surface to test the white water and I didn't want all the calculations so let's um, bring the white water and start working on this let me do stop import let me also pause this pause render stop import let's call this white water main surface all right load this reference let's come to the white water fg white water sim i think is this one oh boy i think we need to go there and check exactly <laughs> my naming convention might be a little bit strange let me manual so it doesn't load this is the surface what is the name is actually a good name yeah ah but we want render the volume we can render the points they're easier for the machine to read and to process otherwise need to process the rasterize and everything so we go with that option i'm going to paste it in here and in this case we're going to say white water and then under white water we're going to have like this all right so it's good we have the white water coming in now we need to also set them uh, with the geometry we can actually pick this one because it's a volume is a uniform volume but now we need to link in a different way because it's a different material and also we want it to be visible to all it's not only when it's visible uh, for the refraction reflection for the white water we actually need it to be but we also want this uniform volume and also we need to enable the motion blur and set to velocity blur and that's all let's do the material if you come to the material you can just grab a basic white water point white water on, on the volume you have like the basic white water and it will work so let me just come in here basic white water i'm going to call these points points and i want to do a few things first i want to increase this drastically i want to have much larger density for that the shadow scale we can have like it like maybe three three five i want the scattering phase if if it's negative it's more opaque so i'm going to get like like that um i will set this but it's not going to influence that uh, but if you have the volume it would but i will go just like uh, 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 because if we do tests later i i might forget to to change that so i'm going to keep like this and that's it the color is all good so we can just come back to the not to the shop but to the stage and do a material library this material library we connect and let's say white water main surface surf mat okay let me select let's go up and we need to do this and now it's going to uh, read the white water that's a lot of points it might take a little bit longer in my case i don't know how much points do you have in your but for me it's a lot of points uh, if if you want if you split your simulation into sections you can decide to merge all and render all at once also you can just 
render them separately in different chunks. It render once and then in Nook or in After Effects, you can just merge them together there. So that's up to you. If it takes too long for, for it to load and, and, and anything, it might worth doing that. So now I want to disable these guys because we're just uh, bringing the white water for the foreground. I want to merge this one in here. Let me see. Ah, okay, yeah, we need to just uh, place this. So I want to assign to geometry. The geometry is this, the white water main surface. And the material is the basic white water points. Okay, I forgot. We need to come here and do the density scale, copy parameter, come back to the stage. And in here, we need to paste relative reference to this one. This one should be the other, the same. So let's select this guy and I will render and come back. We see if we get like it in. Oh, it was so fast. Yeah, it was really fast. Uh, everything matches correctly the surface. It's working properly. Great, so we have like that for all the layers now we have the white water but we still have plenty of white water spray and, and 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 things to bring we also need to bring the boat i'm going to provide all the texture for the boat as well so uh, i think the next thing before i start playing with the the mist uh, we can bring the boat and and uh, because that was going to give us a good reference for the scale of things and, and the amount of spray and all that. Thank you, see you there. So, hey guys, I just brought the boat in. Um, the boat with the sail that's not simulated yet, so we're going to simulate the sails, but all the textures. So uh, what I did differently, so here we have the velocity blur, I'm just disable it for now just to show the textures and everything. But basically the sail we're going to replace with a simulation layer, but for now we can use that to visualize everything. And in the material, I just add the material. And if you dive inside, all the materials are going to be here. And all of them have their own network with the roughness, the, the, the diffuse, the roughness, and the, the normal map. So some of them have displacement on, so there's a lot of materials. And instead of assigning them here, I have like assigned them in here. So let me just, I think I have like the, the sales here. Main sales simulated. This one. Okay, this one, um, I just have like, we're going to add in here later. But for now, we have that. And then I have like this, instead of bringing here, I'm bringing all the materials. And then you have like this assigned material. The assigned material node allows you to bring as many materials as you want. And then you need to set the primitive that you bring from here. You see that we have everything. Because the boat itself, it contains the... Um, the path primitives, the shop material path, because we, uh, when I, I model the boat, I set the shot material path from each material. So they all bring in a different one. So you can just drag to here. The Drissa main, you just drag this one in here. For example, it's going to bring here. And then you pick the material inside the, the network. It's going to have also the materials in here because it's after the mature library. So you have like the, the address domain and you can just drag this one in and you're going to have like that. So that's the 33 materials for this boat. Uh, it about uh, these materials holds, they hold well, even like very close. So it's really nice. You can uh, do different views and it's going to work really well. Uh, for now, I think that's it. We can just visualize how the boat is rendering 
together with everything. I'm going to set stop this. Stop pause render. I'm going to enable the motion blur again. And I'm going to bring this one in here. And this is uh, the reason why I'm plugging the switch is that if you plug the switch and you have like a null, there is nothing. If you set this to one, you just disable the the bolt if you just don't want to see. And you can add like this to all elements. So for example, I can add this one here. And for this one, I'm plugging in there and I'm bringing this in here. So if I want to disable the white water from the viewport, I just unplug this. And the same, I can do another merge in here for all these guys before we merge them here I can just do like this and then I can copy and paste oh not this one is this one and this one we'll see control V And then if I want to disable the, the ocean, I also can just disable it in here. It's just a, a nice way to work because sometimes you just want to visualize one, one of the parameters. So I'm going to do a quick render with the boat in just to see what we got so far. Yep, so here's the boat. We are, we are missing the, the big splash. That's the next thing that we're going to bring is the splashes uh, that we, we created and we keep moving from there. Uh, if you feel like that you can, uh, you want to make the white water thinner, you can just decrease the P scale uh, or even the density, but I would suggest play more with the P scale. And when you visualize like that, wait until the render keep processing because sometimes it looks thick in the beginning but once it gets processed like you see they get back the details in this and yeah all right it's paused let me grab this one and i call this boat splash Flip. We also going to render that as as white water, but for now we can do like that. And we can have like a boat splash mat, like that. For this one, we enable motion blur, lost blur. We enable that. And we need to pick up that. So let me go to our main flip. So it's not this one, it's the boat splash. Okay, so we need to place a new to output here that's out boat splash flip I'm going to copy this come to the stage paste this one for now I want to just See if this is coming through, so I'm going to disable this. So I'm going to place this on here. And I think we can keep like that. So I'm going to go ahead, place this one here because this nothing's coming in here. But we need to bring that off. Same material for now. 
and let me restart the render. So you see we have the, the splash coming in, rendering really fast and it's really looking nice. It's around the boat and doing exactly what we want. If we want to visualize better, maybe we can increase this to 1.5 for now. It's not the look of the render, but just to visualize the element. Yeah, it's nice. So we can stop this and bring the white water. Pause render. Let's, let's duplicate this. Maybe, yeah, we can do like a boat splash white water mat. And in this one is the boat splash white water. It's not the flip, it's two white waters, but just because this is coming from the flip, I just want to. Now you can come up with a better naming convention, but basically we're going to grab from the foreground. We want the splash white water. Is this guy? I think it's this guy, right? This is a is a little bit heavy. So let's okay. First, I need to correct the name here, so it's in the geometry. And I'm also going to plug this in here. And let's restart the render. So we should have now see all the layer of the white water. And it's there. We have like this, the big splash. It's covering the boat, but it's correctly covering the boat. That's what it should do. Because this is the, the, the frame 118, 120 is when the, there is the big splash when the boat goes against the wave. So it's correctly doing so. And I'm going to pause the render. We can now bring the volume of that. So this one is going to be a little bit different because it's not white water, it's actually volume. So I'm going to call this boat splash mist. And we don't need the uniform volume in this case. And I'm going to do nothing here. Or we can just like disable that, do a geometry a render settings, render geometry settings. We plug this one in here. The only thing that I want to, oh, we don't even need to enable motion blur because we can just disable that completely. Uh, the reason why is because we already, when we rasterize the points, remember that we enable the motion blur. It kind of like stretched the, the, the points into the direction of the velocities and we rasterize from there. So we're just saving another uh, step on our thing. But uh, we need to correctly name this, but we need another shader for that. And the shader, we can actually do it in here, I guess. Like, I think we can do, there is a, a cool node called XPU Pyro Preview. So I'm going to call this Mist. And the density scale, we can start by default and then we see, I don't want any fire, there's zero, okay, the smoke, everything is set correctly. And we can just, come in here and say boat splash mist this one mist okay let's visualize i'm going to disable these two guys for now so we can visualize this one because this one is going to come a little bit uh lighter i guess so let me do that is all correct so let's Restart render and then we took the look of that. I can't see much coming in. I, I don't think we have we actually brought it in. So this is splash volume. 
I'll spray Mr. Val, Mr. I think it's this one. Let me double check. So I'm just going to go here and here. Yeah, it's splash volume is this one. It's very faint. So um, let's go back to the stage. And let me increase the density scale here to 50 just to see if the element is there. And I think it is, is this element here. All right, so we can bring it back to five. Very faint. It's going to give like a nice look when it's passing through, I guess. So uh, shadow density, I can make like this maybe just like that. And the element is there, that's what matter to us. If you want to see just that, we can maybe bypass everything. And plug that straight into here. Then, because we can't actually see it again, you can see it here. Yeah, the element is there. So, it's all good. There will be other frames that's going to be more, like this. Now, it's actually more visible in this frame. And you can see how much we have. Maybe this one is the one that would be cool to see with the boat. So I'm going to re-enable the boat. Everything is going to come, but without this, because we unplugged. I'm going to now get this guy, plug it in here. And you see the mist is a little bit too dense i guess i would like to get like the this a little bit less so maybe 2.5 yeah this is just a compliment a nice touch on that and this is looking much better okay so now we have these elements we can have like a i'm going to render with everything again and see you in a moment great we are seeing everything coming together now all the elements this is the the big white water splash coming in and and kind of sinking the boat the boat's passing through it and going to come out in the other side with the spray blasting out we need to bring now the mist from the water from the lip remember that we created that we need to bring that in and after that we can do the ba the BG Ocean, but the way that we're going to do for the final render, we're going to render this first section, and we also going to render the back, the BG Ocean in the back. Um, and for that one, we're going to render it, and we're going to have like the it in comp. We're going to to put this layer. On front of the the back layer and they're going to match properly because the displacement is the same so uh, on the edges so we're going to do this one and then we're going to do the the other one separately and we're going to merge them in comp so we have like the extended ocean in comp uh, for now we need to bring the mist and then we also need to do the simulations on the the sails we need to do the rain and and, and the, the or the rain or just the wind of the of the, the spray from the waves that coming in the foreground layer very intensely because the camera is very low and so it's getting affected by that. So we're going to do that uh, along. But things are are coming like it's it's been a lot of, of cool things that we put together. Uh, and that's a very heavy scene, a very complex simulation and environment with a lot of different elements. Hope you are having a lot of fun. There's still a lot of to cover, so let's go. So well, I'm here in the foreground elements. We have like this simulation from the, the foreground points. We're going to bring those one in, so these ones. Let's 
I think they're quite small. Like if we see, yeah, they're very tiny, the P scale, and they should be like that because there will be a combination of this and the smoke sim that we uh, simulated this, this one. So it's these two elements that are going to be now. So I'm going to copy this guy, go back to our stage. For that one, we need to bring this one. So I'm going to call this um, water spray points. And I'm going to paste them in here. Spray points, they are good. Here, water spray points mat. Let me select this one in here. And can be the white water points for that as well. So I can just come in here. Maybe we can separate that, right? Like, so we don't have like a very stretch. So I'm going to just bring this guy in here. So we have like this as the uh, water spray. This is the white water. And we can just like grab here, make this and this. And we might color this like, like that or like that. Let's grab this one, water spray, all right, so merge this one with this one, but we also can render it just solo for now, just to see if it's coming through. Yep, the points are coming through. Yeah, all good. Both. <clears throat> now I want to copy this volume. I'm going to do like this and paste it in here. And we need to find this. So what's the name of that one? I think it's Miss Testy. Stage density water spray mist mat, and this one is this one, and both of them. no, it's water. Spray mist. And this one should be the name. It doesn't change the name automatically. And so this one we're going to grab from water spray, water spray mist, this one. All right. So we can maybe do like that. Let's do a merge. Let's merge this and this. And this, so we can control both of them. This should be here. And we are making it straight in. This one should be here, yeah. Start render, now it's going to have the volume and the, the mist. The volume, I think it's getting too thick, so let's make it like thinner. Uh, spray mist, this one, we can make it like 0.35, like just very faint, very, very, just a little bit, you know, like this is not the main thing. So I think it's good. And I'm going to render all elements together. Yeah, everything is here. You can see like this little 
points here are the spray from the waves nice we have like all the mist things are start to blending in better so we are definitely getting clover so i think we brought in all elements that we have so far yeah we have like all these elements that we brought uh, i want to bring this. things like that okay uh, next the next lesson we can uh, bring i leave the back ocean for the last i think it's all fine once we define it everything is just use the same shader that you have like for the main ground and for the white water in the back so they blend nicely but in the next lesson we can work on the sails to simulate the sails thank you see you